Hello everyone! Hi! Uh... <laughs> I'm sorry. I can't what even... What a great uh, intro. Folks. Yeah, that was great. Hi! Welcome to the podcast, Local Chat. It's episode 59. Ian's here, Jason's back. Um, there's... Uh, there's... It's just so much to talk about. He's got his hood up. You don't know. Yes. He's the. He's the. Sh- I'm a, what are I'm you a, buying? I'm a, I'm a time. I'm a time assassin, dude. <laughs> yeah, he's a time assassin. <laughs> oh uh, folks, uh, we've got a lot to talk about this week. In the fact that we were just discussing if we missed any news, <laughs> which I'm not. I'm not quite sure. Um, I'm gonna fade this music. I'm down. checking. Ian's checking. Um, we're usually pretty good at your ca- your cat. Is that your cat doing that? He's laying on my desk. He's shoving my camera around. Oh, yeah. <laughs> shove it. Um, usually, we're pretty good about uh, catching the news. I, this week has felt the slowest I've ever felt a, a work week go, yet I can't believe it's Thursday. It feels like it should be Tuesday. Um, what is this? White people talk? We don't have better I, things I, I to don't talk know. about? And it's like, <laughs> I, I walk in the room. I go, well, it smells good. What are you making? And it's just garlic and onions in the, in the... <laughs> Actually, I do have I asked some them what story. the seasoning was. It was salt and pepper. Never would have thought. You um, put that on food, it makes it actually, taste better. I have two stories. Uh, one of them is Karen told me today that she can no longer watch the Kingdom Hearts streams because that song, Simple and Clean, has been stuck in her head and she doesn't want to watch it anymore. We're doing her a favor, ask, yeah. Yeah. Can I just ask you a question? I Do you guys know? I don't really understand. Maybe you can help me out with this. What does it mean when they say, Simple and clean is the way that you're making me feel tonight. Okay. The song was written before the, the game, though. Simple and clean. Sanctuary was written for the game. Simple and clean. Where they're like, hey, we like your music. Let's just put it in this game. I That's just, I I just don't even understand it. the lyric, though. Simple and make clean. Sense. Maybe just they were drug, the you're drug addicts. Feel tonight. <laughs> they take a shower together? I don't understand. <laughs> I don't get it's it. It's a man <laughs> singing to a shower. Um, Maybe the, the other person he's singing to is so dirty. Oh, like, oh! They're so foul oh. mouth and so like foul that you're making me Maybe feel we gotta so get, good. We got to get clean before we get dirty. Exactly. Get get so clean before, before you get like, dirty. Hey, like- oh god! Oh no! Um, oh, no. I always I always panic. I click on the YouTube to check comments, and then I have to quickly mute it as fast as possible. <laughs> um, so my other story, my other story I have is um, back when I bought Arceus, uh, Karen's sister has a Switch as well, so. Like the three of us will play Mario Party together or stuff like that, and I, and I, I was we were we got Arceus Arceus and she was like oh should I get that and I was like well if you like Pokemon you can get it so she got it and she's been playing it she's a teacher and so the other week at dinner she was like hey I forget how it came up but she's like yeah I got to that part and I was like oh is this game over already because I I kind of wish I didn't pay sixty dollars for it. I was like, oh, no, that's, like, the halfway point, and then you, like, keep going and stuff. She's like, yeah, but it got, like, really hard, because now everyone's, like, level uh, 75 and 80, and I, I collected all 17 of these plates, and I'm, like, not sure what to do. And I came to the realization that she has completed the game and done all yeah. of the end game content. So this was as of Friday. I, I meant to text her before the podcast to find out. But she may oh have God. Arceus and everyone in that region by now. It's just like, there's something about that, like, I, I visualize the, like, determined gamer who buys one game and gets their money's worth out of it, which is what you should mm-hmm. do with a video game. And she did exactly that. And I I was stunned. I was like, wow, you're still playing? Like, she's level, well, well, she's max level in Mario Party Superstars as well she could be i didn't even she could level up <laughs> <laughs> she could be a kyle um and i don't know if you've realized this about kyle but I, I i noticed this before we talked about cyberpunk 2077 when it came out and i was like hey how far are you guys let's let's all get together and talk about our impressions on this game and he was like oh i have 90 hours in it and this was like what like a week and a half after the game came out and i was like oh no kyle's gonna love this game and I'm pretty sure Will and I are gonna just gonna shit on it. This is gonna be an awkward conversation, and then we start talking about it, and and Kyle's like, "Yeah, game's not good," and I'm just like, 
why did you play and it i think kyle just does this which is like he's like the opposite of me where it feels like it doesn't matter how he actually feels about a game he just dives in and plays and yeah. plays and plays and plays and plays it which i would love to be but i'm not so maybe she's like that where it doesn't matter whether she loves the game or not she's just like this is my new game and i'm gonna play it religiously for the next x number of days which is awesome i wish i could do that yeah i i was super jealous of kyle even when he was just like doing the DLC for Odyssey and the way he talked about it was like, he, he, un, he like, he knows his thoughts on that game. It's not some crazy passion he has for it yet. He was still like, yeah, I think there's another DLC I got to do too. And like that to me, like I want that with some games, you know, like mm -hmm. I get that to a point with like, I think you and I get that with like Factorio and RimWorld, but that it's not the exact same selective. thing because, because yeah. those games are really good. But, and I feel like I had this, <laughs> I feel like I had this back with like when I was a kid, obviously, like I would play a game because I wasn't buying yeah. games all the time. And I, I kind of miss having, I feel like that's Jason with Fire Emblem. Oh, I replayed those <laughs> fucking like crazy. So I've replayed probably each one in the series probably like six or seven times at minimum. So oh, I would, I would love to do that because I feel just, like. Right now, I'm at this point where I really need a video game to dive into to relax me. But my stupid like standards and like inability to enjoy a game that has flaws is making me very hard for me to dive into any game at all right now. And I would love to be able to just do that whole thing of just like, no, I love this game. I'm going to play it. I'm never going to get bored of it. I'm just going to play, 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 play. I would love to have that. Got to put challenges in there. Every time I play yeah. a different FE game, I, I put like a stipulation on it. Like, I'm going to try to join this unit or something like that. Or I won't, you know, reset after this or whatnot. Or I can only, I have chat vote on my units I'm going to use for the map. Yeah, you just go to do stuff like Ooh. that. That's cool. See, yeah, That's I like that. Idea. And, and you, see, you people watch your streams, which gives you a sense of accountability versus <laughs> us. Yes. Nobody watches anything we do. So we have zero accountability. <laughs> Um, yeah, not true. Zero not true. <laughs> <laughs> um, I saw those Kingdom Hearts streams. <laughs> oh, I don't know why you did that to yourself. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, if we want to get into it, we were doing a little bit before uh, the podcast started. But Ian has been playing Kingdom Hearts two. We've let's we've, just kick it off. Let's kick it off right there. I'll talk yeah. about it. It's on my. I was list. just gonna say we've done um, some light math. If you want to go into that. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Basically, I, I'm a couple Disney worlds in. For those of you who know Kingdom Hearts 2, I have just visited Hercules and Greece for the first time. And um, I was going off of an erroneous uh, time to beat of like 24, 25 hours. And my save is at like eight or nine hours. So I was like, oh, I'm like a third of the way through. And then Elise on the stream said I'm probably 25% of the way through. And Jason, how far do you think I actually am? through this game i think it's 20 percent, but i God, here, here's it. here's what i will say <laughs> elise knows that game better than any other human being on the planet so she okay. might be more accurate with her prediction than i am okay and i might be it's, just worse so you're telling me that 25 percent may be more accurate than 20 percent yeah, but i don't like either answer i don't like <laughs> either you answer. still you still have a like i'm like trying to picture like what you still have to do and yes you do have yeah. quite a bit I'm trying to, did you, you didn't play the first one though, did you ever? No. Okay. No, I played the first 10 hours of the third one and that's it. <laughs> okay. Because I was going to try to compare it's, how long it is in compared to the first one. So. It, it is Final Mix as well, which I believe is longer because it has more extended cutscenes, etc. Yeah, At least that's what I've been led to believe. I, I was saying to you earlier, like you've hit several points that I, I, I don't know if I would have straight up quit when you got to these points, but I like would have blown past enemies like oh, yeah. every single time. Like you've stopped to fight people and my mentality in video games is to skip everything. Combat's not bad. Honestly, I'm kind of enjoying it. I, I feel like my main problem with the combat is they don't explain it very well. And the command menu, I love, I love how much you can do with the command menu. I don't think it's very intuitive. And yeah. so, like, Elise had to walk me through on chat how to get into Valor forms, etc., through that menu, because you're doing a lot of D-pad stuff, and they don't, they don't explicit. Well, they they kind of do, but it's not really intuitive. But once I started to understand it more, I am enjoying the combat more, I, especially. There's a good variety of enemies and how they act and how you have to react to their actions. I, I was going to say, once you get to more and more enemies that use the command menu, specifically the nobodies, use, like, almost mm -hmm. all of them have a command specific for them. That can be aggravating because yeah. you're, like, learning, like, okay, like, I just met this dude. 
I don't know what this command does, but it says like berserk or something like that. Click it, and then you have to like yeah. relearn so much from that. Yeah. So yeah, exactly. But honestly, I think. Okay, look, I'm gonna be honest with you. I was enjoying the experience of playing Kingdom Hearts two for those first couple streams, which was probably the first five six hours, and it's because you're you're in twilight town you're doing some weird things you're meeting some like weird friendly characters and there's like weird intriguing story stuff going on it's like cool and then they're like where where it went downhill and where it got honestly very boring for me this week was when they're like how about you go to mulan world and just like i don't know do mulan stuff for a little bit and that's not crazy enough for me you know like uh, what i like about kingdom hearts is how bonkers off the wall it is and when they just throw you in a disney world even if it's slightly different like it is with with beast's castle and you're like oh where's beast oh let me talk to the teacup oh where's bell like it's not following the movie exactly but it's just not crazy enough for me and that's where the game is slowing down and getting getting tedious for me you are going to like the back end of that game then if you like kind of like the atmosphere you were getting from the first game or first part of the game that becomes more once you get deeper into the plot they start blackening the uh disney like realms and stuff and like you have to in terms of like they cause like mysterious like gaps in there and you have to figure stuff out that'll get more yes is there any conclusion to this game like will anything be satisfied at the end of this game in two you get (laughs) I like how I said it. I, two, you get some closure on some things, but like I, I, you have to remember that I played two, and then I, three, like Blacked obviously out. never came out. Oh. No, <laughs> with yes, but three never came out when I was a kid. After I played two, I was like, okay, well, I'm not gonna get the resolution to this for. So you wrote fan. I was yeah. waiting for so long, so like I didn't care once three came out. Like I was like, I'm moved on to different things. So like, did you it was, did you play three at all? No. Like, that's the thing. So I I played a little bit of it. Again, I had no idea what was going on. And uh, I think Elise said this, and it's kind of the general direction I get, is that three also solves nothing. (laughs) Like, it's supposed to be the capstone. It's supposed to answer all these questions from one and two, and it just doesn't. And so, Will, you are are barking up the wrong Kingdom Hearts tree. (laughs) Probably because there's so many spinoffs is the problem. So, like, I think the, the solo games are decently contained within themselves. But you're going to get some mm-hmm. plot points from one that you're going to be like, oh, fuck. Like, I didn't even realize that was a thing. But thanks. Thanks for telling me. Yeah. Like, yeah. So yeah, like that's I, will, the... I will say I feel like I got a decent amount of Kingdom Hearts one story because I downloaded a four hour cutscenes only from Kingdom Hearts one that I had okay. to cut up into the trailer. So I think I've picked up a decent amount of okay. Kingdom Hearts one story roughly, good. but not not details, you know. You'll like the back end of the game, I think. Okay. If you if it, it compares more to the first part of the game, it does get more Disney esque, like where you're at, for mm-hmm. sure. So I think it'll pick up hopefully here soon for you. Yeah. So. Okay. I'm excited because like it's not so much the Disney part. Like I like I got yeah, introduced yeah. to Winnie the Pooh and, and the Pooh world, and I was loving that. I was like, I'm hopping in this book, and like the nobody's tore pages out of it. Like that's bonkers crazy. I just don't want the standard like visit Disney World generic Disney storyline references. Yeah. But yeah, it, that sounds exciting. I'm 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 excited to hop back in now. Honestly, thank you for pepping up my spirits because. I was depressed. That game got real boring the last two streams. I mean, it's always yeah. going to have some Disney aspects to it, and you still got yeah. a little bit of that to go through. But I think you're you're decently you're you're doing pretty good on it. And then they start mixing other elements of the 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 Kingdom Hearts, I would say, story gotcha. into the into Kingdom like Heart. what's going on here. That's the best Love way it. I can put it without spoiling as much <laughs> as I can. Organization thirteen. Um, so that's yes. that's Tuesdays and Saturdays, eight p.m. to ten. 11 yeah i try to do two to three hour streams just because this game is too goddamn long they're fun i've enjoyed watching them uh karen no longer enjoys watching them Uh, oh my god i I completely forgot to mention that at the previous one y'all made me sing four karaoke songs as goofy and i did it so well that our stream got muted that's the only (laughs) reason why (laughs) i never want to do a goofy impression again i'm done with it (laughs) oh i couldn't believe it boy uh, what else have you been playing, Ian? Um, just one game. I, I started about 90 minutes ago because it came out today. Uh, Total War Warhammer 3. Um, I, I've been I've been anxious to give this a try because I do like the Total War games. I don't think I've ever really 
dived into a total war game it was always one of those games that i would kind of pick up and mess around with for a couple hours i, I don't know what's what's your guys experience with the total war series do you want to start first well i got i got some if you need but... uh yeah I, I played medieval 2 total war hey and... <laughs> In uh, like middle school and high school, and I played a lot of Rome Total War. Yeah, Rome was good. Yeah, I played. I, put, I played Medieval Total War, and that was always fun because they would always get pissy whenever you walk through their fucking territory. They're like, "Hey, the Pope's gonna fucking excommunicate you." I'm like, "Dude, I'll just take over fucking Rome and just like kill this guy and still a new Pope." And the Pope. <laughs> yeah, but the best was when you could play like the not the dlc but like the secondary parts of that it was like ireland or you could be like or like north america or like you pick specific yeah. regions you could do them co-op and i had a buddy that we were just like <gasps> we would just do co-op stuff i was like Ooh. i like northern ireland and he was like wales that. and we killed like england and it was freaking that sick because we were just so hire assassins and shit yeah and you just do all kinds of stuff as a team you could do co-op for those so that was really fun i i, I think total war is a, is a great series you can do it either as a like a kind of like a tactical i'm gonna do board board managing or you can go into the battles themselves i i, I didn't really like the battles but you can to try to sway things i just <laughs> like being the the guy who did like you know the board moving and all that stuff yeah yeah i so i i got into it after medieval so i played a lot of rome and i really liked it and then i played a lot of um napoleon as well because I, I really liked the like gunpowder cannons muskets uh the cavalry square type of stuff um i it's funny though because i think i have played maybe a total of one or two hours of the campaign mode uh nothing against the campaign i just always really like the battle so i would always do skirmishes or uh napoleon had a really good one where it was like it was like 10 to 13 missions and it was the course of the war so it was like, let's replay, oh, you know, this important battle, then this important battle, and then it ends with Waterloo. So you're like recreating those battles as either side. Um, and, and that was really cool because it's, you know, very historically focused. So anyways, Total War Warhammer. I've been hearing fantastic things about it. I hadn't picked it up just because I honestly, I feel like I always bought the Total War games on sale on Steam because I I don't play them enough to get like full price out of them. That's nothing against the game. That's just how I like to play them. Um but Total War Warhammer 3, baby, best deal in gaming. It's on Game Pass. Day one, Damn. launch. So I was like, okay, let's install it. And it's I've only played maybe the first 90 minutes. There's kind of like a prologue campaign, which is very tutorially, like deliberately. It's like it's it's the type of tutorial which I, I like this where let's say there's 50 mechanics in the game. They literally are hiding buttons and hiding mechanics. And it's like, here's three things. Do that in this battle. And then it like exposes a new button. And it's like, look, this button is how you group units. Now try that in the battle. But it, but it still feels like a nice campaign. It's just surprising because I don't know if the other Warhammers were like this, but it's very, it's very story driven. Like, and I don't think that's just the tutorial um you know and i don't know pretty much anything about warhammer lore so i think i'm like these these russian facsimile who have this bear god and their story is that at the end of every winter their bear god shows up and like roars and that clears the clouds and brings on summer or i guess what? spring but their bear god hasn't shown up for seven years oh no and so like you're you're leading this party heading to the north into the into the chaos wastes to try and find your God and your God is so weak and in prison somewhere that you're the only one that can hear him. And so he's like guiding you and you have to start fighting. Like there's uh, people uh, from your lands that have like deserted cause they've given up on their God and now they've become like barbarians. Now you're fighting like demons. So it's actually like really cool. Like doing the story as opposed to the traditional, which is just like, you know, you are Rome fight the Gauls and then throwing you on a campaign map. Um, so I, I think I'm going to keep playing it, you know, and that tactic, that tactical action, it's still there. I haven't played one of these in like five or six entries. So it feels like they've really tweaked the UI and the buttons and stuff to really bring a lot of that stuff forward. Um, like before you would look at a unit and you couldn't necessarily know what its morale or strength was. You had to dig a little bit deeper, but this is just like boom bars on top of stuff. And it just feels like all the basic, really nice Total War combat and mechanics are there. They've just kind of brought it to the forefront and wrapped it in a really does nice it, story. Does it feel overcomplicated is my usual my concern with those? Not so you? far. Okay. And, and, and I say so far just because I don't think they've exposed all the mechanics yet, but I think I'm like 80, 90% exposed. And um, it doesn't feel complicated 
overly complicated too far. It feels like mostly the base game, they've just added and improved some stuff. Like your your general now also has like skills that he can rank up and abilities that he can fire off in the battle. It's not quite like Warcraft 3 type where you have like a yeah, hero abilities. unit that's wrecking people. But you still have like, you know, your your rally ability. You have like a, you know, like a, a ranged attack you can do every 60, 70 seconds. But you can't rely on that unit alone to just wipe through the enemy. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I, I would say if you like Total War, man, it's on Game Pass. Give it a shot. First of all, get Game Pass. If you don't, you're an idiot. Second of all, play some Total War Warhammer 3. It's on Game Pass. It's pretty it's pretty cool. I, I like that sort of. Um, uh, I, the only way I can equate it is in my dumb brain is like the math approach to uh revealing like game tutorials which is like hey here's how you do this thing it's so do it three times and then here's how you do that thing faster like you don't yeah you don't have to like with math like here's how you divide and add and everything here's how you do it faster like that sort of uh yeah like building practice it a little bit yeah practice it a little bit now let's add the next mechanic on top of it practice it a bit flip yeah. it next and mechanic. even if you even if you never do the original mechanic anymore you know how the faster mechanic works because of that and you can like yeah. sort of extrapolate stuff out so I, I like when games games do that um i, I might pick this up i i totally forgot this was coming out so and to know you don't have to pick Pass. it up baby yeah you just gotta install it i gotta i gotta pick up my internet bill and pay it so i can download <laughs> it yeah you should do that um jason uh you also have some uh square enix, square on enix your yeah. list, as you told us before please I enlighten do. tell the class all about the games you have been playing i'll start with the one that is very short really easy and that's escape room simulator and then i'll go into triangle strategy uh escape room simulator i just got on steam i've been playing with the save data guys i think we have another session where we're gonna have like a race or something like that it's kind of like Gary's mod, but like, or like you can do all kinds. You can make obviously these escape rooms that work from like. If you everybody remembers when they got on their computer, they would go to Dragon Games or Mini Clips and find these escape rooms in like Flash yeah. games and do those. It's like the Dragon Red games. Room or the Green Room or something like that, and you were like, "Oh wow, like sick!" Well, they have one of these now on Steam, and they have like pre-generated rooms for like buying it on Steam. And like they're actually pretty fun, but like I think the cool thing is you can play them co-op with a bunch of people. Go in there. I don't see myself playing this by myself, but playing with a bunch of friends, drinking because you don't have you know anything else to do that day. Uh, <laughs> I could see it Eight in the morning. a fun time. <laughs> Correct, and that way you don't have to pay for an actual escape room, which are pretty pricey sometimes too. That's true. Um, I think the big thing is for the future of this game is it has. A community that can make the rooms we already played a made room for instance and one of them was pretty sick and one was a letdown but there's varying degrees of that it's like mario maker but with escape rooms cool concept definitely room yeah. to grow with the community it has that sounds Second awesome game because uh oh, oh no cool. you go you go you go no go ahead i, hear, I was I just gonna say uh, my, my only comment on this was it sounds awesome because like i feel like when i go to an escape room you're kind of like oh i could do something like this but yes. I don't have like a room in my house or the like technology to do that sort of thing. So when like the playing level is even where people can be like, oh, I can make a magnetic lock that unlocks when I put things in different scenarios. Or you can include magic uh, in a video game to like figure out a puzzle. I think that but kind of stuff uh, is neat. The room we the the room the community member made was like a haunted like a like a trick house too. So we would like go in a door and then it would flip the dimensions or something like that. And we were like walking on the ceiling and stuff at oh, one whoa. point. And there was like sixteen different doors. So it was like Alice in Wonderland, like trying to find out which door was the actual what? one. Yeah, there's a awesome. lot of random stuff you could do. We had to pick up a door from a different point, grab it, and put it at into another door in order to open that door and like use oh, it. Oh, that, so that's what I like. It's got a lot of cool functionality. That's uh, awesome. Lots of room. And that was only like two days in. So there's a lot of room to grow um, with like how people like operate their rooms and stuff. That's some really rooms. Cool. The, the second room, we, we we like glitched through some doors and stuff, which is unfortunate because like, yeah, obviously that's going to happen. We walked through where they weren't intending us to go. So unfortunate, but uh, it's a, Man, it, it's awesome, it's got a, it's got a future uh, to say the least yeah. in terms of like cheap. If you can get it cheap. I recommend picking it up if you've got a bunch of friends who are willing to kind of play those kind of games. Puzzle, escape rooms, whatever. Second game, I'm super excited. It's going to be a day one purchase. I know that's something oh. that when you say that, 
to people they're like well that's stupid like or if you pre-order a game that's you know against my religion as a gamer how dare you <laughs> <laughs> but uh no i've been playing i played the demo for uh, triangle strategy uh and you know i don't know if i have the same experience as with square enix as uh ian does but i i actually this game has a, you know a long story just like kingdom hearts uh if i was playing the demo in terms of length they just dropped it i think like a week ago after the direct um you get three missions uh and it starts at the very beginning they had a different uh demo that came out like a year ago that was like mission five like five and six um so i would not recommend playing that plus a lot of mechanics apparently got tweaked and updated um but they have one two three are now available it's for mm -hmm. free uh so if you have a switch just download it off the eShop. it'll uh, you know uh, i think the play time is around four to five hours i will say a lot of that more is story this the, the probably the biggest beef i have with this if you are not a story person this game is a little Ooh. slow at the beginning it is it is jrpg ish at the beginning it does have a story to tell though, right correct correct okay uh and they're right, trying um, i just want to bounce something off you real quick okay if if it's a bad if it's a bad jrpg do you call it garbage that's pretty good uh i if it's mm -hmm. bad you know what that wins mm -hmm. best pun of the day i was gonna listen to some garbage <laughs> the world is not enough Folks, the thank you so much for tuning in. <laughs> if anybody got that reference, uh <laughs> else down. It's not getting better from here. <laughs> Jeez. Um, it the the thing about it is it might go faster, but they were literally trying to dump like, here's this like realm. We're gonna talk all mm -hmm. about this realm. Here's this realm, and then here's like seven of your characters at the beginning. So like they were trying to introduce all of those guys and give them like kind of like flesh them out a little bit uh that's the problem with it but you can skip that like i've been doing a demo two or three times now because i you can there's a route split at the end of the demo actually so i wanted to go the other route and try it out that's the coolest part i think is your party like votes where they want to go based off like your choices oh. during the game so like if i was like an asshole or like i wanted to vote for freedom or something like more like free choices and somebody was more like no 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 like do what's best for the, the kingdom uh, yeah. They might not want to go to this player area I want to, or they would vote against me. Um, so I think it's really cool that like your choices actually do matter. It's not a Telltale game. Uh, no offense to Telltale, they're coming out with Wolf, nah, Wolf, Wolf Among Us too. By the way, I'm looking. At, I'm, I'm excited for that. But the tactics alone, as a tactics player, um, it kind of reminds me of Final Fantasy tactics, like elevation, turn based, in terms mm -hmm. of like one two three four five in the army and based off speeds and stuff uh the you have like ability points per unit too that you can spend that they can do like their special moves but they regrow one at a time like one point per turn so you can't just spam them and i gotcha. feel like the the biggest asset of this game is each character has like a, a specific rule do i want this tank guy to go in and like taunt the entire like army okay he's my guy do I want this person to like flank around and get like a backstab on somebody? Uh, you know, they're very mobile. They like fly on a bird. Uh, there's a guy on a horse who can like stab two people at once Oof, instead of just the normal damn. one. Uh, so each per like a mage can hit like four squares at once, but obviously it's squishy as hell. So like each character feels very, uh, you know, like role based. Like they have like what they're supposed to do. Like, the game even recommends like, okay, this for this mission, I'd probably recommend this. You don't have to do that at all but like they're like hey use this bird person because there's roofs you can fly to mm -hmm. um it's just a really good look I like if you have any interest at all in any strategy games at all free you can check it out if you aren't interested in the story you can kind of skip through it to see if the combat would even line up with what you would want and then you can go from there and watch the story um i think it's a great game like i said the demo alone is probably like a 7.5 or 8 for me and wow. i'm gonna get a wow. day one purpose because i think it has a lot of foundation uh for what it has so that that sounds That's awesome like right up my like i've been playing a bunch of uh i've stopped for now but i was i played through the first banner saga and about half of the second one and like that combat i've been really enjoying which is very similar so i think this kind of might be right up my alley also square I... enix with their demos are really oh. good like that dragon quest builders 2 demo i have 20 hours in and then I bought the game and then I put maybe a couple more hours into it. But like, 
I still can't believe I got 20 hours of gameplay out of a demo. It's just wild. Mm -hmm. The art style, by the way, uh, Octopath, but like, again, just updated. So if you like what Octopath did with it, at least its art style and its visual mm -hmm. style, audio, oh. whatever it did, super good. I, I, I personally think it's clean, but I know people might be iffy on it, but I really like it. It's clean. Yeah. I, I was just thinking, I feel like we need to take a moment of like appreciation. I feel like the last five or six years, they kind of feel like the golden age of turn-based strategy games. Like when you think about like Into the Breach, XCOM, Fire Emblem, Three Houses, uh, you could even go back to like Birthright and Conquest. Like there's just so many good turn-based games coming out now and within the last couple of years that it, that genre is alive and kicking it, right now. It's it's weird because I would agree normally that there's so much coming out. Um, like XCOM has some specific separate titles at least. It had uh, Gears Tactics came out, I remember. And I actually really liked that, but it was, you know, kind of weird. It's they're great, but I don't feel like they get like it's not they don't get like the recognition is they get the die art people that play them. But yeah. like totally. I severely I meant it when I I think I, had, I was on the show the other day with you guys. Like I think Indy is now like the new like guy on the, the block that will get more recognition and like yep. tactics games are the new indie games where like very small niche players play them and if you hit the large fan base uh fire mode three houses did luckily yeah. like something like that yeah. you're gonna you're gonna win big but like good luck getting the, the the general broad public that sit down and play those games uh to the large extent that you know i i think they need so yeah yeah i agree and that's kind of why i wanted to call it out is like when i think about things like real-time strategy games they're they're not doing great right now that genre and we can't take it for granted what we have right now with turn-based strategy just a lot of fantastic yeah. stuff out yeah. there like i i think we, what you're saying real time like needs that 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 game that adds new stuff to it enough that it's like mm -hmm. oh we can make real time strategy again uh and i i think like people are trying but it just hasn't you know hasn't hit yet yeah it feels like it's at that resurgence era where they're like hey let's do the old rts games but in hd and new and they haven't quite hit that innovation point yet yeah totally. fire axis has a game coming out soon too so we'll see what that goes that marvel oh Knights, yeah I think. oh the sun, sun eternal sun. sun i don't remember they have suns they they have two games don't they? they have they have them they have midnight suns and i think they have another game that's coming out too or maybe oh, like... they do have um isn't it a star wars turn based Correct. but it's from former firaxis devs it's something yeah it's from former for fire axis dubs yeah but i, I don't yeah. remember what that game is but like again yeah. like we'll see they, they just announced that it was happening and the genre and who was doing it and that was pretty much it yeah because it, it's it's respawn working with them yeah so like that could be again that could be really good too and we'll see you're right that it, it could be like the, the golden age for it i just hope that the golden age is not you know overlooked because yeah. all these other games came out or like they were like it's just a, the not the popular genre too um yeah that's true because like you said because like mobas is this, or not mobas but like uh, rts's i think like even like are still some there's some solid R rts's it's just not the the play style anymore it's not the thing it's you know it's not vogue like madonna so i don't know are you drinking from the soda stream bottle i've had three of these today <laughs> aren't um, you supposed to put it in something else why would i do that when i can just drink out of the bottle oh my like i don't really care about drinking out of the bottle but those are like reusable, man. Come on now. Yeah, but we have two bottles and one is labeled Will and one is labeled Karen. You only have two. Oh my God. Y'all disgusting over there. <laughs> Why is that disgusting? I don't know. It's really not that disgusting, but for some reason it offends <laughs> We me. have our own bottles that we Anyways, with... uh, Will, tell us about RimWorld. Uh, I didn't play any RimWorld. Um, I don't believe you. I didn't. I haven't played in a while, actually. Uh, Karen and I played some Human Fall Flat. There's, uh, there were three or four missions they had added since the last time. Uh, it's that Gang Beast puzzle solver game. It's very oh, fun. It's on Game Pass. Yeah. I so this thing does this game does something very great, which uh, it is a single player puzzle game that you can have up to I think eight other people join you, and the puzzles don't change, so you can figure them oh, out by nice. yourself. 
or you can cheat and have two people. But you can, even if people are goofing off, you can always be figuring out the puzzle or doing something. And it's not like, like there were a couple moments where Karen's like, oh, come, come help me up this. And I would be somewhere else. I'd be like, oh, you can figure that out because it's, it's, it's made for one person. She was like, oh, okay. So then she would figure it out and get up there. And it's like, mm-hmm. oh, you figured it out. Now we can move on to this next thing. So it was cool. We were splitting up. Like the first map we played, I went up to the clock tower and got this thing while she figured out that you need to get coal into this furnace. And by the time I got the clock tower bell, which was made of gold, we could forge a key to move on to the next area. So um, cool. highly That's recommend good. it. That is pretty um, neat, actually. It's, it's pretty easy. Um, uh, streamline controls. Uh, and anyone can pretty much anyone can play it. Uh, and then another game, uh, Vampire Survivors. Now this game is two ninety nine on Steam. I recommend getting it. It is it's not quite an idle game because you it's it's more of a uh, it's like a twin stick shooter, but you're not doing the twin stick part. There's just tons of enemies coming at you, and you are killing enemies, earning XP, and buying upgrades for attacks that happen around you at intervals. So you have no input for the attack. You only have movement. So okay. like you, like you can get these holy books that float around you to kill enemies. You can get a wand that fires uh, spells and then you get treasure chests. And some of your upgrades through leveling up is like, Hey, I fire twice as many wand shots. Now I, this cooldown is half a second. I don't know. It's, it's, for three dollars, it is super fun, super addicting, and it it like keeps going. Like I thought, is I it, was pretty much is done it with run? It. Is it like run based or how does what is what is the structure? I heard it's a rogue like so. It's, so it's not a rogue like. It's run based. Okay. Shut up. Shut up. Please. Um. No, it is not a rogue like at all. It, it, it. Yes, it's run based. Um. You you <laughs> keep you keep all the money you earn. You unlock. Uh. And you can permanently upgrade your characters as well um and then you're unlocking new maps and you're going through the map so i've i've two maps unlocked now um the first map from what i can tell like there's no borders to it you just keep walking um so oh, okay. like you would do the big loops where you kill a bunch of enemies come back around and like find all the xp that was there and there's this one thing uh that you can it's a gravity orb that an enemy drops if your luck's high enough and it collects all the xp on the map to you and so it's like oh, this that's huge cool. torrent of xp and you're just constantly leveling up uh vampire survivors it's like I real, think it's real quick, quick question so i i remember honestly the one thing that keeps me away from it is something jeff gersman said from giant bomb and i want to hear your take on it if it's true or not if he's been lying which is like let's say you 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 have a run the run lasts for 45 minutes or an hour or an hour and a half and then you lose and you restart that run how bad is that restart? Does it feel like that first 30, 45 minutes is retreading the same territory? Or are you still kind of having fun while you're getting there? What is that uh, restart like? You're still having fun because you're, you're, you can pick a, there's, so I have four characters unlocked. There are two more who have unlocked or grayed out and I can buy them now. So you can always choose a different starting character. The upgrades aren't per character. They're across the board. So that will always oh, apply okay. to That's everyone. Nice. Um, the character specific stuff is like every five, like one of them's every five levels, they move, uh, twice as fast or every five levels, they get twice as much XP. Uh, it's like different things like that. And, and the wind up it's, it's a little bit slow, but as you're having these different characters, you're even the, the chests you find and the, the rank ups, it's always three random things. So you won't always okay. get the, like it was, I was five or six games in before I discovered garlic which is like this shield around you. And so when you level it up like twice, you can just walk into the enemies and they die in front of you. So I had a whole, uh, I had a whole round of like half an hour that I was just running towards enemies, which (laughs) kills them. And then you immediately get the XP they drop. So you're, instead of having to loop around and taking a while, you're just going so much faster. Um, Wow. And it's that kind of thing. And also, once the new like round starts where there's harder enemies, they're tough enough that you can't just like, you can't just keep milking that you got to go. And like, then it's kind of a game where you're trying to find enough XP to, to level up again. So it, it it's not some crazy, like 
oh, I got to spend another 15 minutes after that run. It's more like I just got to ramp up a little bit. Um, and then you're good. But honestly, once you have a 45 minute run on that first map, I had unlocked the second map, which is very different. So you're like cool. the, the strategies on the second map. I had to completely flip everything I was doing, which, which is, uh, which is great. Uh, again, so two ninety nine. So uh, it's totally the progress worth it. you make feels like you make a dent, and then you can yeah, keep totally, going. totally. Yeah. Um, Let me ask you a question: Is this going on the twenty twenty two potential oh, game of the year list? I, I didn't even think about that because yeah, I guess you're right. It did come out. Um, it, I just looked it up. It says December seventeenth, twenty twenty one, but I, that's late enough in the year. I think we include it. I, I, it I mean, wasn't I, discussed in the previous year. I would honestly put it on. It's it's great. Okay, I really I'll enjoy put it. On it. Yeah, if you want to throw that on. Uh, and then the only other game I was playing, uh, not enough to really talk about it, is Lost Ark. It is that Korean MMO that is very Diablo-alike. Uh, Diablo-like. Action RPG, yes. Action RPG. Um, I'm maybe an hour-ish into it. Uh, it's been fun. I I need to go play Diablo 3 again. Because I, I can't tell if the controls are the same. Or I'm just bad at these new controls uh, mm -hmm. like i feel like i want to control my character with wasd but it's all clicking and i like feel like i can't really get behind enemies and stuff and yeah i, I don't know if it's exactly preaching to me but also something i discovered if you this game always runs ultra wide even if you don't have an ultra wide monitor um, I, and I'm not a hundred percent on that, but I asked my friend how the game was and he said, you have an ultra wide, right? And I said, yeah. And he goes, must be nice. And they sent me a screenshot of his monitor with the game tucked up to the top half and just like sparkles at the bottom. Like it was filling out what? the bottom. So I, I, what? I it's not a definitive answer, this up. but I was just kind of taken aback by that um that that would even be a thing i just but i, I could be cr I, he might have just preferred it being lengthy to fit everything on the screen maybe i don't know i'm i'm looking at i'm looking at screenshots and it doesn't look like that yeah maybe i'm crazy maybe he was just it looks like a normal mmo where you have like the action bar at the bottom and then yeah. like map stuff i just thought that was kind of wild uh yeah it, it's been fun it's fr i mean it's free it was a 56 gigabyte download, which kind of sucked. Uh, and Dude, the servers, holy shit. it was pretty easy to get into. <laughs> but uh, How, how's how's the how, have you like interacted with other players at all? Random? I, no, I, so I'm I think I'm still technically in the prologue. Okay. Um, but because uh, in the corner the entire time, it just says skip prologue. Uh, so I'm guessing I'm not unleashed into the world. But from what I've heard from people at work you don't really encounter that many people um so i have no idea how that like hello cat how that section sort of works but uh i, I might give it another try it's, it's one of those games that like i don't i think i might uninstall it but if someone told me tomorrow like man this game's great it's where i'm so had such a great time with it i might what? go find the fun what? Let me bounce an idea off you. When I was playing, I know I, I when I last came on the show, like I think like not just the last time, but the first time, I was playing Star Wars, um, The Old Republic. And one of the big things that got me through that game is I had a buddy playing with me pretty much every step of the way, or at least towards the beginning. So we like we could just like play together, do these missions, the same missions. He remade a guy just to be at my level. Is that a problem with this game that maybe you just are like, hey, like it's harder for you to get interested in it because you don't have additional comrade, like somebody like maybe even like guiding you along. Um, is just the not having like, you know, that personal experience with it kind of hurt it or. Yeah, I can see that. I it's weird. I, I, I don't really play games with other people that often, um, like maybe occasionally. Uh, so I could definitely see since this is an MMO, like having that. Um, and I think that's a big reason why I don't play a lot of multiplayer games to begin with. Uh, it's cause I don't usually play with other people or have people to play with, but yeah, that, that's not a bad point is like, if I had someone to like, kind of hit, hit, go through all this stuff with, you know, uh, well, hey, 
I don't mean to put the it's put you under MMO, the gun. Not an MSO, so. Yeah. Maybe uh <laughs> wow. maybe you and Kyle should play it on a Wednesday stream together. <laughs> it's free Honestly. to play. That's true. I, I could play on a Wednesday stream with Kyle. Um here's the thing. Kyle loves video games. And even though this is a bad one, he's gonna keep playing it until he dies and i can't subject him to that <laughs> no that's actually a good idea i might i'll i might hit him up and see if he wants to play it i should just get more friends who like to play video games and not ian who just mm. says no to everything <laughs> <laughs> uh, or when we do play i just get very overbearing and controlling like with swat Yo, what is this oh, game it's not even fun this game's not even fun why would you ever play yeah. deep rock galactic it's not fun i yeah, that's a good point. At some point, we need to we need to all of us buy Ready or Not, which is the swap for a success for it, and hop back in. That's oh, this isn't fantastic. fun. This isn't fun. I think I, I just you. want to play anything other than Kingdom Hearts two right now. But anyways, uh, that's my, that's my cross anything. to bear. Anyways, um, <laughs> oh, okay, that's all the games we've been playing, which means it's time for the news. Which means it's time to play the news theme. <laughs> Here's the news, we're talking about news, it's gaming news, what's up news? Ah, uh, the dulcet tones of Goofy himself. Um, folks, a uh, lot of news this week, and by a lot, I mean none. Um, nothing happened at all. Uh, it was, it, actually, you know what happened this week? I want to talk about this. In my opinion, the worst stream I've ever Don't be racist. watched ever. Uh, okay. Because there were, uh, because it was no. <laughs> I'm joking. That was a bit. Uh, no, the worst stream. Uh, yeah, it was I've a ever bit watched, racist. <laughs> yeah, it was a bit racist. Um, was the cyberpunk stream? Oh my god! That, I know you had to watch this because of your job, but why did you watch this? Like, like I could see it a mile okay. away. That let me let me just prep this. If somebody did not watch the stream, they were like, guys, we're gonna have CD Project Red, we're gonna have our presentation all about Cyberpunk 2077. And the whole time in the back of my head, I'm going, they they have pushed and pushed the next gen version of Cyberpunk 2077. That's all this is gonna be about. <laughs> there is gonna be nothing worthwhile in here. They're gonna keep pointing at like, look, the police kind of behave like police now, and they don't spawn in a corner next to you anymore and tout like it's a big achievement. And as somebody who didn't watch the stream, but kind of learned what happened, that's exactly, that's all they did. It was just BS, right? So that's all it was. I, I will say, um, I was given through the grapevine, uh, the specific, uh, answer, which is why would we host the stream for this? And we were told it was quote worth it. End quote. Oh, no. which to me, Emmy award actor is not Keanu true. Reeves. It is okay. not, nothing in that stream was worth it. <laughs> Everything. Oh, I, okay. You see, you were going a little bit, I read that as conspiratorial, but, but maybe it's because no, 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 no. I just thought it was Sorry. newsworthy. The, the newsworthy. people from whoever did the stream said it would be worth it for us to pay attention to it, which no. I don't agree with Screw because I, I'm not going to go into it very far, uh, other than the fact that I had to reinstall cyberpunk. Um, it was an hour uh, and these people i blame nothing on these people who are doing their jobs they were doing they did a great job they were they're doing their jobs nothing against them but it was an hour of a bunch of people pretending that this game didn't come out a year ago in a completely broken state and it felt like yeah. this game was coming out next week and this was like the primer stream to be like hey here's all the cool stuff you can do in our game that comes out next week like when you walk outside and shoot a gun people freak out and sometimes cars will drive on the sidewalk because you shot a gun in the air or hey you can change your character's nail polish and hairstyle in the mirror or hey you don't wear clothes when you take a shower because why would yeah. you wear clothes when you take it so it was all these things that sh that were in open world games 10 years ago and they're acting like it's all this new stuff um and also from what I've heard now as well from a few people is basically the Xbox Series X and PS5 versions run and look exactly like the PC version with all of the glitches and problems with the PC version. So it's almost as if instead of 
upping i mean this isn't how it is because this isn't game side but instead of doing work to the xbox and ps4 version they just ported the ps the pc version over to the ps5 oh. and the xbox because it's like the yeah. exact same issues that pc yeah. people run into and also i don't think the game looked that much better no i was looking at some stuff it 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 really didn't i look i just i this pisses me off so much because i, I just want to make this clear cyberpunk 2077 was a playstation 4 xbox one game just forget the pc version it's a playstation 4 xbox one game it did not run on playstation 4 to the extent that playstation pulled it from the store and i personally tried to play it on an xbox one x and it was basically unplayable it was it was dipping down to like five frames per second during combat very heavy load times a lot of stuttering it was basically unplayable like the only way you could play that game previously was either on the pc or on a next gen console using the yeah. quote unquote last gen version so for them to be like oh it's finally out on next gen consoles etc cetera, etc cetera. it's like no this was always a next gen console game period you just tried to release it on last gen consoles even though it would really only run and be playable on next gen consoles and it's disgusting for that reason and so the fact that they're coming out now and being like look we improved the game and now it's ready for next gen consoles and that they they their quote unquote improvements to the game are just like surface level stuff that should have been there from the start and according to people the game is still buggy and broken in a lot of ways uh, i'm done this was like the one chance i was willing to give you because yeah. it's now what a more than a year it's like 14 months since the launch i think it's done the game's the, dead the game's dead the underlying thing here is also even if the the game's just not that like if the game came out perfectly uh no technical issues i think this game would have hit like a sort of not quite cult status but like hey that's a run-of-the-mill fun rpg yeah. uh, in a cyberpunk world but because of all this technical stuff even once that's all fixed that game underneath isn't some amazing crazy thing that they were going for it's like no it's so like it's so it's not even a crazy cyberpunk story it's very generic and kind of like yeah like the only crazy and, and thing think, is the johnny stuff which isn't that crazy yeah it's i i don't think this is surprising to say but it it really rings true which is like as you are playing that game you can feel all of the content that was cut from it like there are so many little tidbits to storylines or nods or new mechanics and then it's just cut off you know like i'll give you an example in the first like 45 minutes of the game you pick your background you're working for a corporation and they're like hey your boss is this lady she's made enemies inside the corporation people are going to try and set oh, her up yeah. and take her down and when they take her down you're loyal to her so you're going to get hurt as well probably so you need to protect her and then you go do one single mission which is kind of like a fetch mission and then it just does like i think it's like a three month like time jump and it's just like yeah your lady boss got screwed and you went down too that's it and it's just like you cut like like three four hours of like opening mission sequence there they just boom, cut it collapsed it and jumped and jumped time and it's just like that all over the place where they like open a door a peek let you see a mechanic or a storyline or potential way this, the game's gonna go or let you do things and then they shut the door and they're like nope that's all you get that's all you get i, I mean it just this, this whole thing kind of reminds me just of the anthem they had like a rebound they're like yeah. hey we're promised we'll give you all the stuff we fucked up yeah they give you this stream yeah. and like by then like you you're like you already lost like people are already like well we memed the hell out of it already anyway like the interest level is just it's crazy well, too because that game felt good to play and had a pretty interesting story and it couldn't yeah couldn't do it so like no. what what chance does this have also uh ian you bring up a good point because even my first playthrough of that game and my first and only i should say um that montage <laughs> sequence say. during that time skip i was just sitting there being like i want to do this let yeah. me do this yeah let this me build myself up want. let me do the whole corpo mission and then let me drop down to nothing and do the whole GTA, like build yourself up with your crew and build up a reputation. And it's like, no, it's just a montage sequence. It's like, yeah. what are you doing? And then after yeah. the opening, the Corpo, Rebel, whatever, different, three different things meant nothing to anyone. No, it's just occasional. It's just like, it's just like occasional dialogue differences for you. Oh, also all. one of the, the things they promoted of adding is you can hang up phone calls now. <laughs> 
<laughs> instead of them instead of them annoying you 14 months after launch oh. yeah it's just like the, that game is literally the skeleton of something that could have been great and the fact that they're coming back 14 months later and I, I know they don't have the resources for this i know this is a big task for them to like radically alter and improve the core of the game but the fact for that they came back and they're just like yeah we did a, a bunch of uh, surface level fixes it's all better now right and it's like no the core, the game is fundamentally broken and you did nothing to address those fundamental issues with it. I guess we've seen like No Man's Sky make a comeback. Does this game pull something like that ever in the future of like, hey, like, you know, like I know no. that's different. It's just two different of genres where No Man's Sky can get away with it because it's obviously yeah. that, that, you know, single, single player explore experience, exploit your own pace, then go there. But like, this doesn't seem like it can come back. I think yeah, so. I feel like when... Sorry, I feel know. like with No Man's Sky, it was like a lack of content in a way. So you yes. had a very base game and then they're adding stuff to it. It feels like with Cyberpunk, they have added so much incorrectly to it that they would have to tear down a lot and redo a lot of work. And um, that's not impossible, but that is, uh, at least in my experience with projects, etc., it is much harder to tear down and rebuild than it is to add. Um, yeah. and so I just, I don't see them making the Herculean lift. Yeah. To make and this I, I think game. you could, someone brand new to no man's, no man's sky today could get into that game and like be perfect versus someone brand new to, to cyberpunk today could load out that game and still run into the exact same issues. People was, ran into 14 yeah. months ago. Okay. Uh, yeah. and also, I mean, this is speculation, but I feel like there's a lot more passion behind no Man's Sky's fan base because it was a promise to be this thing and the people behind it are there to fulfill that promise uh, versus Cyberpunk, you kind of like didn't get any communication out of it when yep. all this stuff was going wrong. Um, but also, I think No Man's Sky is an outlier as well because they're just like full blaze. What, on like update 18 now? I'm like, crazy. Yeah. I knew that. Game it's, came out like plus 2016, they, so or 2017. Yeah. Plus, No Man's Sky. There are people who love that game since launch. I think it is a much, much smaller population of people who love Cyberpunk at the start. Oh yeah, it's there's awesome. much less redeeming qualities in that versus No Man's Sky. And I think even the person I know who likes Cyberpunk the most, which I'm pretty sure is uh, OP, Carl. Uh, even during the stream, we were chatting, and he was fed up with it. So I was like, okay. Yeah. Um, I don't, I'd like not even like, cause it's not, it's not like they came back like no man's sky and it's like, Hey, here's this update. Here's this, all this stuff we're adding. It, it was, Hey, we're adding a, th like it was if, if no man's sky after all that came out and it was like, Hey, we're adding uh color schemes to ships and that's it. Like it was such a okay. basic yeah. thing they're adding that it's like, okay. why, why are you making a stream out of this and not, j if they had just released the patch notes, we wouldn't even mention it this week, but it's yeah. just. Oh, it's wild to me. Um, sorry, that was a bit of a long tangent, but I feel like it was pretty much the biggest newsworthy newsworthy thing this week. Um, just to tail off of Cyberpunk, um, the Cyberpunk and Witcher Three game director and a bunch of other people have left and started a new studio called Rebel Wolves, and they are working on an RPG. Uh, I think there's a press release out for that and some pictures, uh, like concept art. Um, yeah, listen. I mean, I'll it take could a be European cool. RPG. They're yeah, pretty good. it could be cool. But the fact that he's also game director of Cyberpunk is like he shares a lot of the the blame for what oh, we yeah. just talked about. So it's like, sure, bring it on. It's it's so weird hearing. I don't know how to treat CD Projekt Red now or anybody related to them because it's such such a huge dichotomy between Witcher Three and Cyberpunk, and it's yeah. just like it could be anywhere anywhere between those two extremes. Yeah, like I'm hoping in ten years, well, maybe longer. It's like, oh, Cyberpunk was the hiccup, a like for that road. company, yeah. you know? Yeah. Because I yeah. I love Witcher One. I I I didn't play much of two. Witcher Three, I appreciate a lot. I think they they really revolutionized a lot of open world RPG stuff. And then Cyberpunk is just like, hey, uh, what you doing, bud? Um. And so yeah. I'm hoping the next one's like, hey, you came home with flowers and you remembered it's Valentine's Day. Uh, <laughs> thank you. Uh, that's dim the lights. Thing. Yeah, dim the lights. Yeah. Put the Witcher condoms on. Um, so uh, anyways, more news. Um, 
I feel like this is the only other biggest news this week is the Wii U and Nintendo 3DS shops yeah. are being discontinued. Um, uh, Nintendo. Hey, can has I have announced... a hot take on this? You, I, 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 I went in on this. Let after me get you, the information the out first, and then yeah, go ahead. you, you can hot I'm, take. I'm foaming at the mouth for this. I'm one just gonna too. say, okay. it's as, as of May 23rd, 2022, it will be no longer possible to use a credit March. card to it's add March. funds to an account. Isn't it March? No, it's May. I think it's March. March 2023, it, it will be no longer to make purchases. Oh, sorry. My bad. Okay. okay. May, you won't be able to add a credit card, but you will be able to add uh, a credit card uh, to, I believe it's your Switch, and you can still buy stuff through your Switch. Uh, second of all, as of August 29, 2022, it will no longer be possible to use Nintendo eShip cards, blah, 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 blah. And as of March 2023... <laughs> The like uh, entire thing is shutting down for the Wii U and Nintendo 3DS family of systems. Now, okay. Ian, what would you like yes. to say? Uh, a lot of people are upset about this. And I understand being upset because the Wii U and the Nintendo 3DS, they're both great consoles. Um, they have a lot of fantastic games on them. However, they are end of life. I, I don't think Nintendo should have to support these digital stores and digital storefronts and payment systems and downloads forever. Um, so yeah, at some point they got to turn the servers off. And this is just a fact of life with digital games is that you're going to have some games that are digital only. And there's no guarantee that the digital shop that supports that game or lets you buy it or download it is going to be there forever. So yeah, it sucks, but it's a fact of life. People need to calm down. Okay. Don't hate Nintendo so much for this. I, it's the, it's a similar thing to me where they just shut down a bunch of music and, you know, went after Sylvia Gunner's channel. They have every right to do both of these. I have no problems with their, like, you know, they're allowed to do it, but like yeah. you have to, I'll use an example like this. There's a game called Fire Emblem Fates that has three games in it. It has three routes, Revelations, Conquest, and Birthright. Now there's a, a copy that like sold out completely like really early that has all three routes on a single fucking disc. It was like an 80 buck mm -hmm. game that sold out easily. They ran out of stock for it. Now I buy conquest and I have to download birthright, which you can get either one flip that, but there's a third route revelations that you cannot get unless Nintendo online is there. I have no access to one fire Emblem title completely. Mm -hmm. If this goes down, and there's other, obviously, like, you can't get DLC for this game anymore. You can't get DLC for another Fire Emblem Echoes you can't get, which is another great game. Uh, I know I'm just using Fire Emblem, but that's what I know the best. And my, my point is, it's the same with the music. I don't mind if they do this, but I think, bet like, give us options. So if you do this, that we have access to your games. And I know, like you said, you can get on your Switch still, too, or whatnot. Um, I... I, I, I can you get it on your switch and then play it like send it over to your 3ds so, is that what's if it, it as long as you link a credit card to your um eShop account and your eShop account is linked to your nintendo network id wallet you'll be able to buy things until march 2023 okay. but march 2023 everything is shut down it, it's just this company needs then this is reference towards other games even like back then it needs better access to like older stuff in its library in my opinion that's yeah super nintendo like look dude like i'm sorry you locked a lot of your good games to regional stuff fuck off and release it to the states like if if you want or don't complain about people grabbing games off the internet if you haven't localized them or like you know getting people after that like People are going to find a way just to play your games. Now you're encouraging people who have these 3DSs to emulate all their stuff because that's the easiest way to comprehend, like, you know, get everything together and, you know, future down the road. If you weren't around when people were buying this game originally and you didn't get the memo, like, oh, I just lose a title because of this. That's, that seems yeah. kind of whack if you're not giving another alternative to it. I agree with Ian in terms of they have every right to do it. It's an end of the life console. I get it. But at least give us some supplemental way for us to like you know get access to this stuff that is going to be basically lost to history so yeah i think i think i think they have a responsibility the same way i think film production companies 
and, or, and publishers, book publishers have a responsibility to make those things available to people, even if they, they like some sort of public domain thing for video games would be cool. I mean, there's the abandonware site, but especially if there's things you can no longer be able to ever purchase legally, um, there needs to be a way to do things legally. And if there's not a way to do things legally, there's of course ways to do things illegally. Um, and I think if that's your only course of action, I mean, sometimes that's the best course of action. If, 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 if the company's not giving you a way to do it by literally handing them money, then doing it a way that gets you that game, I think is totally okay in my book. Um, I mean, there's a reason the jailbreaking communities for the 3DS and the Wii U are so extensive. And it's because Nintendo is such a difficult company when it comes to that stuff. Uh, like even today I was, I was booting up my Wii U going through the eShop and going through like lists of virtual console stuff. There's so much crap on virtual console. It blows yeah. my mind that none of that is just ported over to the switch. To, like I, I would rather get away with the SNES and the NES and the N64 online thing and just pay, just, I will pay you money to just let me play these yeah. games that you have ported thousands of times to these consoles. And if you're not going to let me do that, I'm going to have a, a Wii and a 3DS that magically have games on them um, that I own. And I, I downloaded the ROMs of legally because I own copies of these video games. Um, I'm going to do that because you're not, you're not giving me a choice here. And that's my point. Yeah, I just, I just, I'm going to be Ian businessman here. I, I think there's two things. Number one is, I don't know if you guys follow um, Hoag Law, Richard Hoag on Twitter. He's basically a, uh, a small business lawyer who loves video games and is constantly just giving like the legal take on video game decisions. And um, he had a very good point with the, um, the YouTube uh, Nintendo taking down the uh, Nintendo music on YouTube. And it's basically so long as that person exists with full copies of Nintendo music on YouTube and Nintendo does not act on them, it makes it easier for somebody to maliciously use Nintendo's copyrighted music. Cause all that person has to do as a defense is say, but look, this other person's doing it on YouTube and Nintendo didn't do anything about it. And that's a precedent that Nintendo doesn't care about their copyright. So it's one of those things where you have to defend, you, you kind of have to do the bad thing to defend your own copyright. And I think this is kind of another example of that where I'm dealing with this in, in my job. We have an old product. We have a product that is literally 35 years old, but we still have a lot of customers who use it. And it's down to basically like two or three people working on this product. And all they do is they handle a bug every couple of weeks that comes in from a customer. But the problem is, sure, we fix that bug, but then how are we going to test it? How are we then going to build a whole new version of the product with that bug in it? And then how are we going to release it? So we're having to keep all these like AWS virtual machines up and running with like super archaic code bases and super archaic build processes just so we can fix a bug that a customer reports for a product that we're not even selling anymore. And it's like, sure, that, that, that garners a lot of customer goodwill. But at the end of the day, when you look at like the bottom line dollar amount you are spending just to support that product with two, three buck fixes per year. It's pretty easy to come to it and say, no, we got to make a business decision because we're going to save this amount of money just by saying, no, no more support. And, and I think that's kind of the decision they've had to make here. And no, it's not super fan friendly. And yeah, I hate it from a games preservation point, but honestly, it's an end of life product. It's been like that for a couple of years, even longer for the Wii U. And at some point they've got to go, no, we're not going to keep extending our resources and not making money off this just to keep fans happy. Yeah. It sucks, I, but I think, I think it's less of, I definitely agree with you. Them turning, turning this stuff off. I mean, makes sense. Your, your audience isn't there anymore, but I think setting up a way to make that stuff still available. Like even if it is a, a web page with just the download codes, for games that were eShop exclusive where I can click on them, purchase, and they give me a code and I can put it on my my 3DS. Yeah. Something like that. And as long as 3DS yeah. can connect to the internet, 
Um, or, or if that doesn't work, put them on car. I mean, I know it's a, bu- a bunch of extra work, but letting people it's extra work though yeah i know I'm <laughs> i saying. love it these are great ideas but it's extra work for like very little actual return and that that's a calculation they have to make they're going to piss off the fans by doing this and you know maybe they made the wrong call here because of the amount of pushback they're getting but um at the end of the day this is this is a business decision and i i totally understand why nintendo would make it like that yeah and i also think at the end of the day they know people can get that game if they want to play it anyways so why would they put yeah. in the work if people can just get it anyways um yeah. yeah that's that's wild um i mean this stuff always comes up it was the same conversation with the ps3 online turn off and the whenever the halo servers get turned off there's someone in there yeah. feel good so i'm gonna be running my wii u connected to the eShop. i'm gonna plug it in for forever and you're the gonna, servers will you're never gonna keep to... your connection active so they don't yeah. get to turn off because that's how never, servers work yeah <laughs> Let's we'll shut down the city of Clifton to get to me. Um, I uh, this other stuff. There's a Cap Capcom countdown. It is still as of this recording three days off. Uh, people are assuming it's going to be DLC Street, Street Fighter. Village. I think it's going to be their most DLC popular game, Evil. Dead Rising. Oh, I'll <laughs> kill for another God. Day. Dead Rising Three, top tier game. It's my favorite Capcom game besides Marvel vs. Capcom Two. Oh, I love. I'm a Resident Evil boy um there's also netflix uh so some some data miners of the u.s copy and patent office found netflix agreement documents for bioshock and something else i can't remember what the other one is but this got picked up enough that netflix came out and said yes netflix and bioshock were working together and we're making a movie and it's probably or a tv show it's probably not going to be good um oh. Where which was one, which one? where was this ten years ago? Is my question. They said they were going to do yeah. this ten years ago. I mean that fell and, apart ten years ago. I know, but I'm just saying. Like, I think if you're ever if you were ever going to do any game or series into a movie, I always thought Bioshock had the best yeah. because you could literally just copy the script. Or there's a book that's going to be reversed, but it's Bioshock Rapture, which is a prequel, which is mm. the building of like what happened. And like it's it's yeah. heydays, and like the guy who like he's in the game actually, I think Bill Donahue or something like that. I probably got it wrong, but you have so much material and source material that's written for you. You cannot fuck up unless you cast the Rock as goddamn <laughs> Andrew Rock, uh, <laughs> yeah, a, a big daddy, and you have Jim Carrey fucking as Jack, the guy who's supposed to be unassuming, but he's cracking jokes <laughs> instead of the no, instead says of the quiet. Man like, God. yeah, exactly. Um, I, I don't know, like. The, the thing's yeah. right there. It's printed for you. You cannot fuck this up. And somehow, that, yeah. Might. That be that being said, uh, this is a film adaptation. I really think this would be better as a story. Me too. My con- my concern is when you try and boil this story down into ninety <laughs> minutes to a two and a half hours, it's it's going to come down to action sequences and bare bones plot. And I feel like it would be a lot better and have a lot more room for extra details not in the game. If it was more like a six to ten episode, miniseries. yeah. See, I think, I think a TV show set in by in Rapture, yes, and they sort of, and it it becomes that discovery of the lighthouse sort of thing would be neat, where they discover mm-hmm. the other like Columbia and all that sort of stuff could be cool. And as far as a movie, I guess like that kind of changes it. Like, I don't want the movie to just tell the story of Bioshock, but I also think it will. It could easily tell the story of Bioshock because you could do it's Minerva's a pretty interesting Den, story. Either. Yeah, you could do uh, Minerva's yeah. Den too as well. Yeah, Minerva's there's Den, so yeah. much you could do from it, but I, I don't want them to just copy the the the, the game word for word because then you would not get any of the yep. back story yeah. of like they would just be fighting splicers. Like okay, like who the, the average person going, who the fuck is a splicer? But it's gonna like, be what it's, the hell is this? I mean, it's gonna be the game because the the un the character who doesn't know anything who stumbles into the world and learns things as the audience learns things is the is the basic thing for a movie so it gives you the character and it 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 gives them the out to explain things to that character that then explains them to the audience so that's exactly what's going to happen um it <laughs> would be interesting to see would you kindly from the third person because i want to know what yeah. what your character looks like like because you, when you get that reveal, you're like the whole time on either on a second playthrough. He looks like the Rock. Sorry, it took me a while to get there. But oh, that's there. it. But what I'm saying is, does the character know 
Yes. That they're There's being forced to do the it end. the whole time? Yes. No, you, you kind of like flash back and remember that. Okay. Oh, right. Yeah, would you kindly, would you you're kindly, genetic, would you You're a genetic, like, human that's been, you're like one year old, too. Your, like, entire backstory is like, yeah, like, you're Because they made you, faster. And, yeah. and then the, the box and everything. So, it'll I, be interesting. It'll be cool. Um, I have one more caveat to it, too. Yeah. Uh, people it. are mad because that game is famous for, I am, the choice is really imbalanced in the game. It's actually more OP to always take the little sister because, for the most part, because you get rewarded for both anyway. <laughs> So there's no moral compass to it anyway. You get to save the girl and you get a lot of powers because they deliver it to you later. You, the choice gets removed from the movie. Now that he's going to either make mm-hmm. the the Adam choice of taking it out of the slug and killing the girl or saving her. They're probably going to have to save her because you want a sympathetic hero. I don't think they're going to make that hard choice of I get more. That's Adam a good by point. I wonder if her. he's so, like he's about to like die or something and it's either save or kill and he has to kill her. And she just like looks and at she'll him. Feel bad. Yeah, like, they don't have the balls. They don't How have the balls. Are we doing, Mr. J? And then it's I like, think yeah. at the most, at the most, uh, one of the girls is going to sacrifice herself yeah. for yeah. him at the end. Yeah, he falls in love with her. Um. Uh. Okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> aren't those those little sisters? Yeah. I guess they're like. I they're not hated... legal. That's what you're going towards. <laughs> Please, thank you. Um. <laughs> Jesus! What do you want to know? Will? To I can tell you I, was gonna... I know that series like the back. I don't of know my where hands. to go either. We need to was... stop this podcast before I was you gonna say make something. Make a joke about Will. how big their eyes are. It no, always weirded go, okay. me out. Wrap it up. Um, <laughs> what do you mean wrap it up? I'm playing the music. I'm helping you out over here. I know. Oh, people can't hear this now. They can, folks. It's not the intro. I was getting all excited. Folks, thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, there was a Sam in the chat. Thanks for uh, chatting with us. I was reading your comments. Also, thank you to all the people I had to ban in the chat for posting bad things. Uh, they were just bots. Um, naughty, naughty boys. Naughty. Naughty, naughty boys. Jason, thank you so much for being here. Always a pleasure, guys. Hopefully yeah, I, I, I really enjoy on. having you on. I booked you in advance, and then I double-checked, and you said yes, and I said, crap! No, I'm kidding. Great! Uh, I was very excited. Uh, that Fuck you... shit balls. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> Ian, uh, you're going to keep playing uh, Kingdom Hearts yeah. 2. I will be watching on Saturday. I know other people will be watching. Um, if uh, I may, our next donation tier... If we get to seventy-five dollars, which we're only twenty-five dollars away from, I will be reading several pieces of Kingdom Hearts Two fanfic, including one that is a Kingdom Hearts Two King of the Hill crossover. Uh, That's pretty so good. Yeah. I like. Should be that. crazy. Get in on um, that, I'm trying to think of what else we've got going on. Kyle's doing Wednesdays. He's been playing through Sable. Uh, I I might try to stream at some point, maybe um, on yeah. the weekend or something. I need to find a game that I kind of just want to do it like a not a full let's play but just kind of hang out and play with people um i'll see if i have any time for that maybe sunday um i think that's it uh so everyone have a great weekend have a great uh life and we will see you all next next time